Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I know what you're thinking, and you're wrong, okay? This is not another shameless commercial for my 3D printed instruments. No, it just so happens that I've set up the lights, background, monitor, good tripod, external lavalier microphone, simply because I want to casually show off my 3D printed creations. Okay, in all honesty, I am filming a commercial, although uh, I don't intend this to be the actual commercial. Uh, I just want to casually show off my instruments, just to give you an up-close and personal look at these things, and also give you a little bit of a uh, history about these guys. Uh, so I, I started modeling the trumpet, I think, in 2012. I could be wrong. Maybe 2013. But uh, I originally tried to do it uh, by eye. I, I just eyeballed it and just kind of held up the trumpet against the computer. I'm like, is that about right? I'm not sure. It's sort of, kind of. But uh, miraculously, it did print pretty well. And I don't have that print on me. I think it's, a, yes, it's across the room. Oh, well. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So uh, this is the 2.0 version of the trumpet, which is based on exact measurements from my Gutsini Turner, which is again across the room. And uh, I think the original trumpet is about 21 inches long. This one came out to be, this miniature trumpet is about 5 inches long, which is the smallest I could make it, and coincidentally, the cheapest I could make it. Now, uh, I'm excited because I finally completed the set that I set out to make which is the trumpet, the stand, and the main mutes that you'll find in a trumpet player's arsenal, which is, of course, the straight mute, cup mute, and harmon mute with removable stem. That's my uh, favorite part right there. So uh, let me show you uh, exactly the details of this. So uh, because I measured this based off the original trumpet, I got all the nitty gritty details in there. And you can see uh, the valve caps there. You can see the slide. You can see all the details on this Vincent Bach mouthpiece. And with the stand here, you can actually see where it screws in. Versus the, uh, here, this is, I have one of the original prints here. This is the very first attempt at the <laughs> stand. And uh, just by looking at it here, you can see that a lot, of pro a lot of progress was made. I have no idea why I made the legs so big in this version. I think I was concerned that they wouldn't print or something. But uh, yeah, this is... Uh, geez, I haven't really seen these guys right next to each other before. But you can see the trumpet does still fit on there, which is funny. You also notice that this is a little yellower. The trombone is uh, very yellow. And uh, my assumption is, is that it's uh, the oil from your fingers. If you touch this too much, it'll uh, start to absorb that because uh, this does absorb like uh, ink very well. As you can see, I was uh, doing a paint test there at the bottom of that one. So uh, I'll put it back on that one. So let me show you the, uh, the mutes here. Uh, the cup mute, which was giving me a lot of trouble when I was first making it because the cork pieces here wouldn't be... Um, big enough. So you'd put it in the trumpet and it would just fall out. But as you can see, I finally got it to stick in there. Straight mute, same deal. And of course my favorite, the Harmon mute, which was probably the hardest to, whoops, uh, the hardest to uh, uh, kind of go back and forth between like how what the scale of what it should be and what it needs to be in order to fit inside the trumpet because there was some uh, conflict for some reason even though I was measuring the actual harmon mute. So that's the trumpet. I also did a trombone as I kind of alluded to before. <laughs> so uh, we got the stand as well and uh, this <laughs> The trombone, as I just demonstrated, is really big. Um, let's see, if the trumpet is five inches long, then this is 10 inches. About half the length, uh, the trumpet is about half the length of the trombone here. And uh, no trigger, just a very basic trombone. And uh, yeah, fits on the stand just like so. So, uh, yeah, just wanted to show off my 3D printed instruments before I actually film the real commercial. 
I am extremely proud of this. And if you are interested in, I don't know, purchasing it, then you can get it right there. Actually, that's a really bad place for it because uh, it's right against the white here. Let me flip this up. Yeah, now you can see it nice and clear against the table here. Oh, and also, when you do buy it, um, because of the material here, this is a nylon material, nylon plastic. It begins as a powder, and then a laser, a really fine laser, cre uh, fuses together uh, the places where it needs to be solid. And that's how we can uh, print these elaborate details here. But unfortunately, this powder can get caught in uh, some of the crevices of the, of the uh, models, especially like in the bottom of the stand, which I think I've knocked most of it out now. Uh, but I think most of it's falling out from the, uh, yeah, there it is. There it is. Uh, <laughs> So, if you, if you buy, oh my gosh, it's still going. Uh, if you buy these, uh, yeah, just keep that in mind. Uh, you'll get a lot of uh, extra nylon powder with this. If anyone asks, just say, uh, yeah, it's nylon powder. <laughs> wow. So, uh, yeah, I've made a mess. I'm going to have to clean this up. But uh, that's my 3D printed instruments. Thank you for sticking through the entire video. Bye. If anyone asks, just say, uh, yeah, it's nylon powder. So that's what the kids are calling it these days. Wow. In this video, I just want to talk about and show you these virtual, virtual, no. Uh, um, well, they used to be virtual. They used to, they were built in the computer and now they're in the physical world. No.